Hey yo, the speech gods are back and we want to start off the year with a bang. Yeah, dude. Winter break was really relaxing for me. I mean, it was really nice taking some time off without listening to boring lectures and looking at a screen. I know, right? But you know what's more tiring? What? What could possibly be worse than hours of Zoom calls? Writing college essays. Oh no, not, not that, no. No, not that, no. No! Kev? Kev? You there? I think he's dead. Oh well. He's just a supporting character. No need to worry. This week's show will include a behind the scenes look at the Arcadia Quiz Bowl team, Trump's final days in office, the growing controversy around the game Cyberpunk 2077, APN's first sports update of the year, and a check-in with Principal Dillman. Without further ado, welcome to show 13. How are you still alive? Our Quiz Bowl team has made big strides with their competitive success throughout the years. During this tournament season, their academic drive continues as they reach even bigger achievements even in the midst of quarantine and online practices. Here is Sammy with more on how Quiz Bowl is thriving in a virtual environment. Our Quiz Bowl team has made big strides throughout the years in their competitions with always placing top in the rankings. This year proves to be no different, despite the virtual setting. Let's go behind the scenes to see how they have adapted. Quiz Bowl is a form of academic competition, and you can be describing it as Jeopardy with teams. So basically, we can buzz in on many different categories ranging from history, science, literature, uh, pop culture, and current events. Despite the pandemic changing the lives of everyone in school, Quizbowl has still managed to meet through Discord. Discord lets them continue having practice matches and to play against other teams. A big aspect of Quizbowl is the face-to-face -face interaction you have with your teammates and the other team, and that's kind of lost online when you're just staring at a screen. But we've managed to make the most of it, and we've been hosting our practices at regular intervals, and we've been competing at regular intervals, even though tournament competitions do tend to be kind of, um, they take longer online. Even with the challenges that Quizbo faced in 2020, they were still able to perform at their best. During that time, they were able to get number one in the Grover rankings and were also placed number one in the nation. So it's a great feeling to always to win, of course. Um, we've been having a good team synergy, uh, like our teamwork has been spot on and we've all been contributing and that's led us to win some big games and tournaments. This has been Sammy reporting for APN. Let's head back over to Lawrence and Kevin. What do the finest minds on Quiz Bowl and successful SAT takers have in common? Simple, dedicated studying and practice sessions. For those of you who are looking for that elusive 1600 on the SAT or 36 on the ACT, the Counseling Department, PTSA, and the Compass Education Group have teamed up to provide practice SAT and ACT tests to students grades 9 through 11. The exams will be held online on February 27th at 9 a.m. and all test takers must pay a $20 fee. If you qualify for a free or reduced lunch, please email afits at ausd.net for a $10 fee reduction. Be sure to sign up at the link down below if you wish to participate. Good luck. The drama that erupted on Capitol Hill and a push for the end of a presidency comes forth as rhetoric on both sides intensifies. But what led to these events? Ricky is here to tell us more about the final days of the Trump administration. This Wednesday, the House has voted to impeach Trump after a pro-Trump rally turned violent on Capitol Hill. The Save America rally imploded as an aggressive mob of riders stormed the U.S. Capitol building on January 6. These rioters clashed with the police and everyone in the building was evacuated, including state senators who were in the middle of counting electoral college votes. When I saw it on Wednesday, I was shocked. Like most Americans, there were feelings of disbelief, followed by feelings of may, concern, embarrassment, anger, and confusion all rolled into Certain riders even possess homemade explosives, firearms, and other weaponry. And while there have been many arrests and ongoing investigations on multiple suspects, many politicians have put responsibility on the president for encouraging the riot. We're gonna walk down and I'll be there with you because you'll never Take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. 
The tragic event resulted in five deaths and dozens of other injured people. In response to the rally, members of Congress have pushed for Trump's removal from office. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senator Chuck Schumer pressured Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment, which would forcibly remove Trump from office and prevent him from running for president in the future. Pence's cooperation was needed to invoke the amendment, but he rejected the resolution through a letter to Pelosi. So instead of the amendment, members of Congress have turned towards impeachment. House Democrats and as much as 20 Republican representatives have publicly supported the article of impeachment, and on Wednesday evening, the president was impeached. Now, Trump will come on trial in front of the Senate, but the voting process takes time and may seep into Biden's presidency past January 20th. Regardless, the future of our country will be handed to the next president, but what occurred the past few years will not be forgotten. Young people coming up who are getting their political awakening um, in their teens and 20s right now are going to remember this, hopefully going to be inspired to act, to get involved in politics. We hope you tune in next week for our coverage and report on Joe Biden's inauguration. This has been Ricky, back to the anchors. A new era of politics is being ushered in with the Trump administration's end. And this year, AHS students will have a chance to be a part of this new era. The Arcadia PTA is currently taking applications from juniors and seniors who wish to be a student representative for Arcadia at the 2021 California PTA Legislation Conference. Students will not only hear from politicians and education experts on how state laws impact California's children, but will also directly lobby local legislators. To apply, please go to the link on your screen. Submissions are due by January 17th. Hey, uh, Lawrence, did you write anything for the break segment? I, I do not see any text on there. I think you really screwed up, man. What do you mean? This is the joke for the break segment. So you're saying that the words we're saying right now are planned? Why do you think that this moment sounds so cliche and structured? <laughs> Whoa, that is so meta. Yeah, it's mind blowing, dude. And now we're going to a break in a break. Whoa. My New Year's resolution is better time management. To study an hour a day for each of my classes. To be more patient. I'm trying to work on my time management skills. To do something with my hair, whether it's cutting or dyeing it. To manage my screen time better. To be more productive and listen to more music. To sleep more. To stop procrastinating. To sleep earlier. It is currently 3.17. To start waking up earlier. To eat more fried chicken. Arguably the biggest game release in recent memory, CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077 has had a very rocky launch with bugs and glitches galore. Though the company is working hard to win back its fans, new issues have emerged for the Polish developer. Here's the Rune and Riley with the details. Cyberpunk was probably gaming's biggest release since Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption 2. Though Cyberpunk 2077 has made nearly $1 billion already, the Polish developer CD Projekt Red had to apologize to its fans publicly. But things are not looking good for CDPR since multiple lawsuits have been filed against the company and an investigation by the Polish government regarding the development process of fame. Co-founder of CD Projekt Red, Marcin Iwanski, stated in a public statement that the company's grave mistake was building the game at an epic scale for PC, and then later porting that into the inferior hardware of last-gen based consoles. This decision completely backfired as the team struggled to get the game up and running on Xbox One and PS4 until the very last minute. The Rosen Law Firm has filed a class action lawsuit in the United States District Court of Central California saying that investors in CD Projekt were misled by CDP regarding the quality of Cyberpunk 2077, stating that CDPR covered up the quality of Cyberpunk 2077 on consoles. This class action lawsuit needs a certain amount of investors to move forward, and as it stands currently, they are far from the required goal. Yet, CDPR isn't out of hot water just yet, as the Polish government's Office of Competition and Consumer Protection has opened up an investigation into CDPR and their potential fraudulent business practices. CDPR is hard at work as the development team is setting out to release the first major patch within 10 days, followed by another major patch on February. In addition to that, planned free DLCs that were going to be added to the game 
will be released once the game has been patched for all platforms. Well, this has been Tarun and Riley reporting for Apache News. Even though cyberpunk may be tainted with scandals, there is still content from ABN to keep you busy, in the form of God AFK's fourth show. On this week's edition of APN's gaming show, I discussed a new episode 2 of Valorant, the removal of the PogChamp emote, and Riot's plans for season 2021. While you're at it, go listen to APN's Waveform, now available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other major podcast platforms. This week, it will be covering a wild 2020 year-end review, so check it out when it releases at 3 p.m. today. Even though 2021 has just begun, the sports season is in full swing, and athletes are still out there playing hard and winning games. Ian and Harrison are here to bring us up to date on the NFL, the NCAA, and why Los Angeles has been in the headlines recently. Last weekend marked the beginning of the NFL playoffs as 14 teams looked to bring home the Lombardi Trophy. We also simultaneously crown another national champion. Let's review last weekend. Early Saturday morning, the Buffalo Bills took down the Indianapolis Colts in a close game thanks to great performances from Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen. A few hours later, our very own Rams handled the division rival Seahawks 30-20 in a win almost nobody expected. Jalen Ramsey locked down DK Metcalf once again, and the Rams' strong defensive show proved why they are number one in the league. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers used their star-powered offense to beat the Washington football team, which will set up a very interesting divisional matchup with Drew Brees and the Saints who beat the Bears 21-9 on Sunday. The other two games featured some even bigger storylines with the Ravens avenging last year's playoff and this year's regular season loss to the Titans to move on to the AFC divisional round. Lastly, the TikTok stars Chase Claypool and Juju Smith-Schuster got embarrassed by Baker Mayfield and the Browns ending the once undefeated Steelers season early. Even after this loss, Claypool was still talking trash. You know, bad loss, but um, Browns are going to get clapped next week, so it's all good. In other football news, the national championship was played on Monday as the Ohio State Buckeyes took on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Heisman Trophy winner Devontae Smith and the stacked Alabama team proved to be too much to handle for Ohio State as their overpowered offense put up 52 points en route to Nick Saban's sixth title win with Alabama. Lastly, some sad news out of LA. Last Thursday night, former Dodger manager Tommy Lasorda passed away at the age of 93. LA was lit up blue for Tommy and Dodger Stadium painted the number two on the field in his honor. Our thoughts go out to their family and friends as we say goodbye to another legend. Ian, it's truly a blessing to have sports back again. Even though it may look a little different, it helps to feel like we're returning to normalcy. Yeah, I totally agree. Without sports for almost four months last year, it made me realize how much I take it for granted. Definitely. But for now, this has been Ian and Harrison reporting for APN. In a time where there is a great emphasis on equity, diversity, and inclusion, Arcadia High School administration is working to embrace these principles and would like to hear from you. If you wish to share your opinion with the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee, sign up for a listening session at the link down below. We encourage all Arcadia students to share their perspectives so that we can improve our school community together. As the second semester begins, questions about the status of returning to school, social events, and sports have begun to draw more and more attention. Clara is here with Mrs. Dillman to update us on what we want to know. I think that there's there's an idea that we have information, like secret information, that the general public doesn't have, and that's just not the case. What we have seen is, as the situation of COVID changes, so do the rules for schools and all of society. So right now, we're just governed by what the county health department allows, and we feel like we're doing everything that we're allowed to do. If we are able to start bringing groups of students back, which is not in the foreseeable future, there's no you know, rule change that would allow us to do that yet. I do hope that the freshmen can even take their like link crew orientation tour <laughs> before, before we go on summer break. Again, like I don't know how likely that will be. I know that ASB and the senior class, they're, they're looking at activities. We've, uh, I know that they asked if they could do a drive-in and then the cases kept going up and it wasn't safe and then there was a stay at home order. I think that they're really trying to do everything they can within, you know, with what's safe. Things like graduation, we feel like we have a little bit more flexibility and guidance there. Right now, the best we could do is think about something in small groups that we could film. But we're thinking as much 
outside of the box as we can. And we traditionally have graduation at the racetrack, which I think is what everyone's been looking forward to. Um, and we are working with the racetrack to see if we can still use the facility. And yes, we can. Normally we start planning for graduation in December and January. And they said, let's push it till March because maybe then we'll have a better idea. All we can do is if we all do everything in our power to follow the rules and help make those cases come down, that's the only way we're gonna have any of this stuff is if the cases go down and, and the stay at home order lifts and things get a little bit more flexible. Thank you, I'll be tuning in on Friday, like every Friday. Like Arcadia High School, Apache News is discussing whether to change its name in light of recent attention on the Apache emblem. During the past few months, the APN crew has examined many aspects of this issue. And now, we want to hear from you, the viewer. If you wish to share your opinions about a potential Apache News name change, please fill out our community survey at the link on your screen. The survey will be open until January 29th at 11.59 p.m. We appreciate the support of our viewers, and we hope that you all will help us through this unique process. Hello? Uh, yes, Felix? Wait, 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 wait. We're not done yet? There's another story? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, got it. Breaking news. Wait, more news? Kevin, we have a time limit to follow. Yeah, yeah, but this is important for our viewers. APN reporter Giselle Lai finally fixed her fire alarm after months of ignoring it and letting it beep in the background of her news stories. She is now free to anchor on APN shows again. Congratulations, Giselle. Whew. You did it. You saved your family. Go, Giselle. Wow. What an amazing start to this year. I can't imagine what things could have gone wrong. It's not like anything, you know, insane happened recently. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this week's show. Make sure to watch God AFK's recent episode and go check out season two, chapter three of APN's Waveform at 3 p.m. today. This has been Lawrence. And this has been Kevin. Stay safe, stay strong, and Happy New Year. <laughs>